Yoni's disease and caprine arthritis and cephalitis are two deadly diseases that you need to keep out of your goat herd. Yoni's disease and CAE have carriers. These are goats that show no clinical signs yet can excrete the bacteria or the virus and pass it on to other goats. Also, Yoni's and CAE have no treatment so that there's no way to eliminate these diseases from goats' bodies. In the next slide, talk about the International Animal Health Organisation. It requires every country to notify it of outbreaks and also of certain diseases. And both CAE and Yoni's disease are considered serious enough for them to take note of. Every year they produce maps. You can see in this first map of Yoni's disease that Australia is classified as purple, which means that it's in zones. However, in most other developed countries, Yoni's is widespread. Africa and parts of South America, even though they're shown as green and white, this is more a reflection of the lack of veterinary services and diagnostic labs rather than that they are free of Yonis. In this next slide, which is a map of CAE, Australia is shown as having clinical disease in all states. It's only notifiable in Victoria, so really it's only Victoria which has some indication of the number of cases reported each year. New Zealand is shown as pink and that's because unfortunately Australia exported goats with CAE to New Zealand. CAE probably originated in Europe and then spread to the United Kingdom and then to Australia and then to America. You'll notice that there's some countries showing in purple where they're limiting the disease to zones because they're trying to eradicate it. In the next slide, it's a diagram showing that there's a balance between disease control and trade. For example, the OIE only specifies that goats that are sold across country borders are only have to have one negative test for both Yoni's disease and CAE. And this is a reflection of trying to reduce the cost to allow the export of livestock. In reality, if you really don't want to have any chance of getting Yoni's disease or CAE, you shouldn't just test the animal that you're purchasing, you need to make sure that that animal has come from a whole herd who have regular tests and are always negative. But it's a balance. Unfortunately, I think the balance has now tipped the wrong way for Yoni's disease. Recently, you would have seen in the next slide that Japan has halted all the imports of live cattle after 60 dairy heifers turned positive to CAE, sorry, to Yoni's disease in Japan after they were exported from Australia. These same cattle were actually tested negative in Australia, but subsequently tested positive in Japan and Japan ceased live cattle exports from Australia. In reality, if Japan wanted to have better assurance that the animals were free of Yonis, they should have come from a Yonis accredited free herd. There was a recent review of bovine Yonis disease as shown in this next slide. I wrote submissions to this review highlighting the dangers to the goat industry 
if deregulation of bovine yoni's disease went ahead. Unfortunately, the terms of reference were not ideal. For example, the, there was no consideration given to the potential zoonotic aspects of Yoni's disease. There was strong lobbying by the beef cattle industry to free up deregulation because they wanted ease of movement of cattle across state boundaries. This review went ahead and most states now have deregulated bovine Yoni's disease. In the eastern states, such as Queensland and South Australia as well, quarantine herds have now been released. This applies both to goat herds, which were quarantined in Queensland for Yoni's disease, and also for cattle herds. There is now no movement restriction into Queensland, which was previously a restricted state. So this means that any livestock, even if they came from a Yoni's positive herd, say in Victoria or Tasmania, they can now send animals into Queensland, whereas previously this was not allowed. Only Western Australia have kept their movement restrictions as an interim measure. So it remains to be seen what's going to happen. One of the rationales for deregulating bovine Yoni's disease was that it was thought that the current regulatory system of quarantining herds in states which were trying to control it wasn't working and that cattle producers in particular just hid the disease. It is very, very widespread in the Victorian dairy cattle industry and also increasingly in their beef cattle industry. The review pointed out that some other endemic diseases of cattle were more economically important than Yoni's disease. However, my submissions really highlighted the fact that Yoni's disease lasts for so long in the environment and also can get swept down in floods that I believe that it's critical that Yoni's disease is controlled. However, my submissions were not successful and you can read them on my website. One of the negative effects of this deregulation of Yoni's disease is that the researchers currently working on Yoni's disease will find other areas of research where funding will be more likely to be made available to work on. And they'll move away from researching Yoni's disease. And there was an excellent uh, unit in the University of Sydney, which was doing some great research on Yoni's disease. And now because Meat and Livestock for Australia have indicated they will no longer fund Yoni's disease, we're less likely to have research and development which will help Yoni's disease in goats. This drift away has already started. Lorna Sitter, who was a very experienced policy officer with lots of Yoni's disease skills and knowledge, recently left Animal Health Australia and is now heading up the Yoni's disease control scheme in Ireland. This slide shows you what Yoni's disease looks like in a goat. This goat's extremely poor condition, but not really scouring. It was only three years old. It had recently been purchased about six, eight months ago. Had kidded. The owner had dried off the goat, trying to put weight on it. The owner had just thought it was a wormy goat that was not responding to worm drenches. However, a blood test confirmed Yoni's disease. I then went back a week and a half later, destroyed this goat, and it was confirmed on post-mortem that it was Yoni's disease. This slide highlights that goats get both the ovine Yoni's disease or the sheep strain and the cattle strain or bovine Yoni's disease, but they most 
commonly get the bovine strain. Similarly, alpacas and deer mainly get the bovine strain. This slide about Western Australia shows you that it's the only state that was considered free of bovine yoni's disease. Queensland has always had some cattle in quarantine for yonis. And this was because of their restrictions for entry. However, we've, even with these restrictions for entry, they did have ovine yoni's disease. And these ovine yoni's diseases, herds, flocks, are still present in Western Australia. They do extensive abattoir surveys and this highlights that they don't really have a, a bovine yoni's disease problem. There is a searchable database for market assurance program herds as this short slide demonstrates. You can search by species, so cattle, sheep, goats, alpacas, then by breed and then by status, so MM1, MM2. You can also search by the name of a person, a property, a town or a state. Unfortunately, goat numbers have been dropping in the market assurance program, but recently some additional herds have joined, so this may correct itself in time. The slide explains the Yoni's disease jargon in the market assurance program. MN1 is a monitored negative herd which means they've had one whole herd negative test and the annual management plan. And MM2 means there's been two negative tests plus a herd management plan every year. MN3 is three negative tests over an approximate four year period plus the annual plan. If herds also vaccinate against Yoni's disease, then they have a V after their abbreviation. The, there is a manual. This manual can be downloaded from the Animal Health Australia website or you can purchase it. But don't get too worried about all the rules and regulations. Basically, your veterinarian is responsible and they will discuss what you need to do with the annual plan and you don't have to worry about it too much apart from what you sign off on doing and that includes things like ensuring that you don't purchase any stock without your supervising veterinarian's permission. So the manual is there but you don't have to sit down and read it from cover to cover. Your veterinarian has to do that. Veterinarians who are in the market assurance program for Yoni's disease get a certificate as the one shown on this slide. Vets have to pay an annual fee, but more importantly, they have to do online training, both about the epidemiology of Yoni's disease and the Yoni's disease bacteria but also about the rules of the Market Assurance Program. You can search for vets in the database, which is on the Animal Health Australia website. There's also a database of auditors because external auditors will come along sooner or later and audit both the vet and the person whose property has been accredited. This logo showing a scouring cow highlights the fact that the typical sign with cattle is a profuse watery diarrhoea. And this is the logo of the cattle vaccine. However, with goats, this profuse scouring doesn't occur. Here is another example of a sarnen goat with Yoni's disease. And as you can see, it just looks like a skinny goat that might have worms or might have been poorly fed. There's really nothing to identify this as a goat with Yoni's disease. On post-mortem, sometimes you see these enlarged lymph nodes 
but quite often these aren't very obvious. In this particular case, they're both enlarged and you can see that they've got cheese-like pus within these lymph nodes. In this next slide of the British Alpine with Yoni's disease, you can see that the lymph nodes around the gut are massively increased in size. But sometimes there's no obvious clinical signs that you can see with the naked eye. This means that if you have a goat that's wasting away, it's critical that samples are taken for microscopic examination to diagnose Yoni's disease. This diagram here in this slide shows you the samples that must be taken for the Q-Alpaca scheme. You take samples both of the gut and also of the gut lymph nodes and these are examined to see if Yoni's disease is present or not. Yoni's is no joke as this slide illustrates. There is a vaccine but vaccinated animals can still shed the bacteria and still will get the disease. They just get it a couple of years later. This means it's economic to use, but if you're not planning on culling your goats for age and you want to keep them alive and as healthy for as long as possible, then vaccination is not going to really help you. There has been some debate about whether liming pastures would help but a review by Meat and Livestock Australia showed that this was unproven. This slide here shows you the gut lining and you can see the lumen and you can also see these red dots all throughout the wall of the gut. And basically the gut of the goat becomes a Yoni's disease bacteria factory and millions of these bacteria are excreted in the goat's manure. This slide shows you how Yoni's disease can get into your herd. Kids and young animals are most at risk and it's thought that they mainly get Yoni's disease in fairly, very early age. However, in goats, adults can still get it if they're exposed. Milk and colostrum are a very important source of Yoni's disease, especially if the milk is contaminated with manure. But even if it's not, there is a risk of the Yoni's disease bacteria being excreted in the milk. One research paper showed that even with sterile milk samples being collected, one in 20 samples of milk from Yoni's disease goats actually had the bacteria in their milk. Manure can transfer Yoni's disease bacteria from one herd to another, so it's critical that you make sure manure is not tracked on your boots and make sure that your feet of your goats do not walk through manure of a sheep, cow, goat, and then comes back and walks through your pasture. Don't use feedlot manure on your pastures because this can introduce Yoni's disease bacteria. However, the most likely way of getting Yoni's disease is by introducing new stock, whether they're a cow, a sheep, a goat, or a guardian alpaca. This table shows you that there is no way that you can identify by any test the early incubation period of animals that are incubating Yoni's disease. Neither the blood test nor the faecal culture will pick it up. Later on, when they're subclinical, just before they become showing some signs, it's possible that the blood test will turn positive, but the animal is already shedding low numbers of bacteria in their faeces. In the clinical case where there's weight loss, the blood test will be positive, but they're shedding this time high numbers of Yoni's disease bacteria. In the advanced cases, as with that poor grey Anglo-Nubian, where the goat's emaciated, dehydration, 
has set in and there's some intermittent diarrhoea. We'll be positive on blood test, but they're producing millions of bacteria in their faeces. This slide shows you two groups of kids. There is no way that you can test those kids to find out if any of those kids would introduce Yoni's disease into your bird. The only way you can be sure that for a safe purchase of new goats is to buy your goats from herds that are in the market assurance program. Even if the herd has been tested annually, that test result is only as good as a couple of weeks prior to taking that test. It depends on whether the herd is closed and what level of biosecurity that herd has. With the Market Assurance Program for Yoni's disease, there are rules that they are enforced by the supervising veterinarian who checks all the movements of, of goats at the annual planning session. So if you're going to buy a goat, make sure you buy a goat with one of these certificates as shown in this slide. We can say that Yoni's disease is like dandelions in the lawn as demonstrated by this slide. Dandelions are very difficult to see in a lawn and that's why carriers are very difficult to see in your herd. However, every now and again a dandelion flower, flower will pop up and this is the same as having a clinical case of Yoni's disease in a herd. Generally only have one flower at a time and you generally only have one clinical case of Yoni's disease in a herd at a time. But unless you dig out the taproot and get rid of all those dandelion flat taproots as you have to get rid of all the carriers of Yoni's disease, you're never going to eliminate the problem. This next slide shows you some of the key features and key things that you can do to prevent Yoni's disease spreading if it gets into your herd. And that's good hygiene. So this is not only good for Yoni's disease, but it also helps for worm control. So if you keep your sheds nice and clean, remove all the manure daily or twice daily, if you feed your hay in elevated hay racks, if you make sure your waters aren't contaminated by the manure of the goats, if you put your old bedding in an area that the goats can't use that's fenced off and that doesn't drain into the goats paddocks, then you're helping both worm control and Yoni's disease control. For Yoni's disease, that bedding and manure must be composted for at least 12 months to ensure that the Yoni's disease bacteria have been killed. Yoni's disease has been shown to survive in mud for 12 months or more. Now this slide shows you the reasons that you should control Yoni's disease. The first one is obviously animal welfare. You don't want your animals to suffer from an incurable disease. The next one is sale of stock. As the purchasing public becomes more aware of Yonis, they're going to be demanding that you have some sort of Yonis disease accreditation. Yonis disease can also survive low temperature pasteurization. You must have higher temperatures to kill the Yoni's disease bacteria. There are links to Crohn's disease and type 1 diabetes in humans and if you're interested in this or want to make up your own mind about the risk of Yoni's disease and people then go to www.yonis.org and look at the zoonotic section. There is some thought that it's not an infection in humans 
by the Onion's disease bacteria, but an allergic reaction in some people to Yoni's disease bacteria either alive or dead. If this is proved to be the case in the future, then Yoni's disease will be declared a food adulterant. There is already a YouTube video put out by a sufferer of Crohn's disease in Australia and that calls for the ability of consumers to be able to purchase Yoni's disease accredited free meat, milk and dairy products. With this next slide, we'll talk about vaccinations. There is a vaccination. It's registered for goats as an aid for controlling Yoni's disease. It's best given to kids four to 16 weeks of age because we know that kids are generally infected in very early life. However, all vaccinated goats must be tagged, even if they're dairy goats. There is also a cost. The smallest pack size is 100 mils, and that costs about $400. Also, vaccinated goats can no longer be blood tested for Yoni's disease. You have to use faecal culture, and that, of course, in goats takes about 14 weeks. So you can't use the blood sample that you would use for CAE if the goats have been vaccinated. This next slide talks about the general biosecurity obligation, which is now in place for all people in Queensland. And that is an obligation not to let diseases off your property and to take all practical and reasonable steps to make sure you don't spread animal diseases. Yoni's disease is also restricted matter, which means that it must be reported in Queensland. You won't be quarantined, but you must report it. However, one of the rationales for deregulating Yoni's disease was that people were hiding Yoni's disease. And it was argued in the National Review that by removing that quarantine threat, more people would report. But unfortunately, people don't do the right thing, as the VW emissions uh, scandal has shown. Even large corporations don't do the right thing. So I remain to be convinced that people are going to report Yoni's disease because their reward will be they won't be able to export overseas. So I don't know if this is going to actually achieve more people reporting Yoni's disease. So with blood tests, um, you can test both for CAE and for Yoni's disease. So what's the difference between accredited and annual tests as demonstrated in this slide? If your goats are untested, then you really have no idea they may all be carriers, they may be one carrier or no carriers. If you test the individual animal that you're about to purchase, it's better than doing nothing, but there's no guarantee that it's not in the early stages. And it's pointless to test an animal before it's 12 months of age, because the test won't show up positive. If the herd has been tested once, then that is giving you some reassurance. If it's herd has been tested more than once, so every year or every two years, then again that gives you a higher level of assurance. But the best is that it's accredited and audited. And that's part of the market assurance program. It must be remembered that CAE and Yoni's disease gets into most goat herds on the back of a truck. And that's when you purchase stock without due care and diligence. Always get a goat health statement before you buy and you can get those from www.farmbiosecurity.com.au Biosecurity is buyer security. It helps your bottom line. If you're having animals coming for service, make sure that the people clean their boots, sweep up 
any manure that that goat um, drops while on your property and don't let the mating take place on the pastures that your goat is going to your goats are going to then graze do it on a driveway or a concrete area where it's easy to sweep up all that manure so the basics for yoni's disease and CAE control is that you need to keep it out of your herd but you also need to have some sort of regular testing so that you find it fast if it does get in. You need to have good hygiene to stop it spreading and you need to eradicate it. If you need to know more about CAE or Yoni's disease then go to my website which is www.goatfetoz.gov.com.au and there's a page on Yoni's disease and a page on CAE and there's a lot of free information that you can download. I also have um, booklets that can, you can purchase about both diseases so just contact me if you're interested.